say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and the bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets reckless, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still Say, does that star-spangled banner yet or the land of the free and the home of the It is my pleasure to introduce the 31st Governor for the State of Nevada, the Honorable Joseph Lombardo. Well, good morning, everyone. Military precision there. So, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for everyone for being here today. It's such a special day. The Nevada National Guard carries a proud legacy dating back to 1861 when the Nevada Organic Act was signed, laying the foundation for Nevada's military history and resilience. The Guard has stood strong from protecting our territory to serving on the global stage. Today, the Adjutant General holds the esteemed role of leading 4,700 dedicated soldiers, airmen, and civilian employees. This force stands ready to answer the call, whether that's defending our nation abroad or safeguarding our communities here at home. In just the past month, the Nevada National Guard showcased its unwavering commitment to both federal and state missions. The Guard sent more than 200 soldiers to U.S. Central Command, responded swiftly to the Davis Fire. Round of applause for that one. <laughs> and participated in Exercise Cartwheel in Fiji, promoting international partnerships and readiness. This could not have been done if it wasn't for the leadership of Major General Andra Berry. Major General Andre Berry's career shines as a testament to service and dedication, embodying what was meant to be, what is mean, it means to lead with both heart and conviction. Before becoming Nevada's 30th Ad Adjutant General, he served with distinction for 25 years in the Reno Police Department, 
climbing the ranks. <laughs> Emphasis on assistant. <laughs> Beyond his remarkable career, Major General Barry has been a cornerstone of this community, of his community. His community work extends across organizations like the Boys and Girls Club of Truckee Meadows and United Way of Northern Nevada. His service to the community is nationally recognized. These programs will continue to inspire and shape the futures of Nevada youth for years to come. <laughs> Major General Barry will be missed. He didn't just lead, he cared deeply about the well-being of his service members and his state. General Waters will have come We'll have some big shoes to fill. Are you guys comparing over there? <laughs> Who does have the bigger feet? But I am confident that General Waters will continue to uphold the legacy of excellence that has long defined the Nevada National Guard. Brigadier General Waters brings with him a wealth of experience, having most recently served as the director of the Joint Staff for the Nevada National Guard where he skillfully oversaw joint military operations and coordinated Nevada's domestic emergency responses. Thank you. A native of Sparks, Brigadier General Waters' military career began in 1985, and he has since flown multiple aircraft from the UH-1 to the UH-60. His career has taken him around the world from Afghanistan where he served as the Afghan National Army Operations Officer. Sure. Upon returning to Nevada, Brigadier General Waters served as the Chief of Staff to Major General Barry before becoming Director of the Joint Staff in 2023. And you still recommended him. <laughs> he must have done a good job. His accolades, which includes Defense Superior Service Medal and the Legion of Merit, speaks to his dedication and skill. Brigadier General Waters also holds degrees in biology, psychology, and business, reflecting his commitment to continuous learning and excellence. Congratulations. I am grateful to these men and their decades of service to our nation and to our state. In conclusion, Nevada stands among the most military-friendly states in the nation, a place where our service members are respected, celebrated, and supported. Events like this change of command ceremony are a testament to that. Local law enforcement and countless community groups coming together to honor the Nevada National Guard. Thank you. I want to thank the Guard to their service to our state and also thank General Waters and General Barry for your service. Thank you guys. Attention to orders. The President of the United States of America, authorized by Act of Congress, July 9th, 1918, awards the Distinguished Service Medal to Major General Andre L. Barry for exceptionally meritorious service and duties of great responsibility. General Barry distinguished himself as the Adjutant General from 1 September 2019 to 30 September 2024. During this period, his leadership and initiatives were a catalyst for growth and opportunity that the Nevada National Guard has not seen since its inception. General Barry identified key areas where Nevada needed to apply additional focus, such as cyber defense, platform modernization, and a realignment of the Joint Army and Air Force strategic plans to better align with the campaign plans of the Department of Defense. In keeping with these efforts, General Barry spearheaded to work with the congressional delegates from the state of Nevada to pursue the C-130J, airframes for the 152nd Air Wing, ensuring the 152nd would have the essential equipment needed for the fight in the, big, the Blue Pacific or assisting in the raging wildfires of the California, Nevada, Sierra and Mountains. With depth understanding of the importance of the state partnership program, General Barry set in motion the addition of a third state partnership with the nation of Samoa. The distinctive accomplishments of General Barry culminate a long and distinguished career in the service of his country and reflect the highest credit upon himself and the United States Air Force.
A proclamation by the Governor of Nevada to General Barry reads, whereas the Adjutant General for the State of Nevada has served with unwavering dedication and exceptional distinction in the United States Air Force since enlisting in September of 1986. General Barry has demonstrated passion and commitment to excellence throughout his career in law enforcement, the military, and the private sector at MGM Resorts. And, whereas General Barry served with distinction for 25 years in the Reno Police Department, volunteered and worked with a myriad of nonprofit organizations throughout his life to include the United Way and the Boys and Girls Club of Truckee Meadows, and whereas the state of Nevada expresses deep gratitude to General Barry for his four decades of honorable service to our country and to the state of Nevada, we commend him for his leadership, commitment, sacrifice, and on behalf of all Nevadans, we extend our best wishes for reaching retirement from the military on October 31st, 2024. The governor of the state of Nevada hereby proclaims October 31st as a day in honor. I, uh, if I knew y'all were going to be this nice, I would stay longer, governor, because this is as nice as they ever been. So thank you. And uh, good morning, everybody. How are you doing? You know, when I get up and talk, it ain't going to be boring. So uh, keep in mind, uh, as we just, uh, and, they, and they, there's a, there's a uh, wager, you know, under, over five minutes, under five minutes. So if you put under, you're going to lose. But... Uh, <laughs> Distinguished guests, esteemed leaders, fellow guardsmen, community members, retirees, congressional delegation, uh, General McKinley, friends, family. How many travel from out of town? We got some people who came from a long way away. Can you give them a hand? They came. They came to see General Waters, and so they didn't come to see me. So, uh, but uh, and uh, and our, and our commander in chief. Governor Joe Lombardo. Today we kind of stand at the crossroads of tradition and transition. And this is a very important moment for the history of the Nevada National Guard. But it's also a day of gratitude and reflection. Yeah. And but I'm, I'm here with just immense pride. And uh, I don't care what anybody tells you. I don't care what you see on the news. I don't care what you read. I don't care what anybody talks about. The Nevada National Guard, those people in uniform are best in class, the best you were going to see in the nation. They get it done. They take care of the state. You are seeing excellence right there. So I, I just say, it, you know, you hold the position and... and uh, General Waters is going to find out real quick, you just go to a bunch of meetings, they do the work. So, but together we face some of the most trying times from deployments to vital support to the homeland to state partnerships. Whether it was natural disasters, pandemic response, or ensuring the safety of our community, your Nevada National Guard did it outstanding. But also none of this would be possible without our families. We cannot do what we do without our families. Can you just take a minute and give them a big round of applause? I also want to uh, recognize our civilian partners and our local leaders and employers because in the Guard, the majority of our force is, 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 uh, in, has a job or doing something in our communities. So we cannot do that without the, the balance of, of careers of civilian and military. And it's their willingness to support us that makes it happen. But I also want to uh, say that uh, I believe we have the best CODELs in the world. And I would be remiss I don't know why Congressman Amadei is not smiling right now, uh, but I would be remiss if, because we can't get what we get done without you. So thank y'all so much for having our back. And I, uh, people get jealous because we can get to them pretty much any time. And that says a lot right there. So the ability to talk to your Codells, have their phone numbers. Uh, I, I try not to bug them, but Waters is another story. So, uh, but so thank you for what you do. Can we, can we acknowledge them? Because they, 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 they are phenomenal. And as I said before, our community, uh, we, we, we're, we're collaborating, we have partnerships, and I don't know where Dan Morgan is, but he's our honorary commander, but we cannot do it without you, because you have our support and our back, and you make it happen for us, so thank you for what you do. But I also must say uh, thank you to Governor Lombardo uh, to give uh, each of you some inside information about him. Uh, he's been 100% supportive of the Guard. Let me tell you, to know that you have your commander in chief that has your support, has our back, and everything that we've been through, he's always, always, always supported me. I cannot thank you enough for what you've done to make this job so much easier for me. Thank you so much. Can we give him a big round of applause?
uh, his, he, he's been great. His team, I don't know where Tim Robb is, and uh, I, I think Tim's over here somewhere, but let me tell you, uh, they, 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 they make us look good. I know Tim has took some incoming for us, so thank you for that. Um, and I just want to say just uh, a few words about our incoming adjutant general, Dan Waters who will be taking up the mantle of leadership. I just think it's important for you to know who he is. With his vast experience, dedication, and vision, uh, I am confident he will take this organization to places it's never been before. When you sit in this seat, one of the biggest things that you want is to have a team around you that's committed, that's dedicated, that's loyal, that's focused, that's intentional, and has your back. He has been outstanding at that. Uh, I, I've had... Uh, first-hand knowledge of his integrity, his strategic acumen, and unwavering support for those in uniform. He cares, he loves the troops, and will take the National, Nevada National Guard to levels it's never been before. Matter of fact, uh, Jeremy Kinley, I had your coin in my office, and, uh, and, and I thought it was missing. It was, I thought it was stolen, but Mr. Ananality over there had taken and placed all my coins in the correct order by rank. He... <laughs> I mean, we had an APB. I was like, we're going to shut this place down. <laughs> anyway, it's a true story. <laughs> no, that's a true story. So, uh, but he will be a great champion for the total force in the governor's cabinet. So, Gover uh, uh, General Waters, as you take on this role, know that you're not just stepping into a position, but you're becoming a steward of a legacy, one built on sacrifice and honor and service. Thank you, General Clark, for we stand on your shoulders. Um, an Italian philosopher once said this, there is nothing more difficult to take in hand, more perilous to conduct, or more uncertain in its success than to take the lead, than to take the lead into the introduction of a new order of things. Yet this is the requirement and calling for the next adjutant general. I'm excited to see you and Kim and Tim, Team Waters where you will take this organization. I am confident under your guidance that we will be phenomenal. The Nevada National Guard has always been more than just a military organization. It's a defender of freedom, an organization of leaders, and a symbol of what is right about this nation. We carry forward a legacy that has built, been built about those who have served before us. And we have a responsibility to uphold that tradition. Thank you for your dedication, your professionalism, your unwavering commitment to take care of this nation. It has been my privilege alongside with my sidekick, my battle buddy, and my wingman, senior enlisted leader Cameron Peters over there, and our senior leadership team to serve with you. And I will always cherish the memories that we have made. I salute you for your unwavering commitment and how you take care of this great nation. I say this time and time again, you cannot have a great nation. You cannot have the longest running democracy in the history of the world. You cannot have the freedoms that you have today. You can't have the quality of life that you have today unless you have a phenomenal military. Standing before us right now is what right looks like for this nation. <laughs> cannot. I will always be your champion. I will always be your advocate. And I will pray for you every day. And with a loud mouth, because I have one, and let the world know Nevada's finest are the best in the nation. Remember the Nevada National Guard, this is where leaders are made. Your courage and commitment and resilience matter. Thank you for your service, your sacrifice, and answering the call. And before I'd be remiss if I didn't say this, thank you, if you look at this room and all the work that goes into it, thank you, Team Bouchard, for what you have done and the team you've assembled to make this happen. Let, Let them know that the state of Nevada is going to be just fine because you have the men and women and the civilians that wear the uniform with pride, the less than 1%, those who get it done, those who deploy, those who take care of the homeland, the state partnerships, those who care about our community, the quality of life, they give up their birthdays, the holidays, and anniversary to make it happen for each one of us. We will be fine because the Nevada National Guard is in the lead taking care of our state. Thank you. Thank you. General Berry. At this time, General Berry will, re will receive his final salute as the commander of the Nevada National Guard.
Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the change of command. Of the state of Nevada, Major General Andre L. Berry will relinquish command of the Nevada National Guard to Brigadier General D. Roger Waters, effective 19 October 2024. Well, good morning, everyone, and what a great day it is. Governor Lombardo, and for those of you who didn't know, Governor Lombardo is an Army veteran, Nevada National Guard himself, and a fellow Ranger. <laughs> General Barry was right. We have an amazing congressional delegation for the state of Nevada. Senator Cortez Masto, Senator Rosen, Congressman Amaday, thank you so much, and thank you for your staffs. They are incredible people, and they do incredible work for the state of Nevada. Together, you support the Nevada National Guard, and thank you for everything you do. Very good. And General Clark, I tell you what, sir, uh, it's been a long time. First Adjutant General when I came into the state, set the foundation for the success of the Nevada National Guard. And if you don't know General Clark, you don't know the Nevada National Guard. There is a true Nevadan dedicated to our country, dedicated to our state, and remains an incredible asset to this day. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your trust and confidence in Kim and my ability to lead and advocate for our entire force. Soldiers, airmen, civilians, their families and our retirees, we do stand on the shoulders of giants. Major General Barry, thank you for believing in me and your mentorship and guidance. To whom much is given, much is required. Before going any further, Kim and I would like to express our gratitude. There are so many that have helped play a role throughout our journey. From our initial assignment with the Nevada National Guard, in our transition back from European Command, and in today's ceremony, we very much appreciate all you have done and all we will continue to do together. Was I, while I was in Washington, D.C. earlier this week, I had the opportunity to visit some old friends and mentors at Arlington National Cemetery. Major General Bob Herbert and Colonel Jerry Bussell during my time with them, I reflected on my indebtedness to others. I have been extremely honored, blessed, and proud to serve with some incredible people. Names like Fisher, Barry, Boldry, Clark, Delaney, Ducharme, Fulkerson, Jones, Laycox, Luby, Moore, Nielsen, and so many others. Others actually started in high school when I was assigned as a teacher's assistant to a special needs class. I did not have any experience in this area, but I had applied to be a teacher's assistant, and that is where I assigned, and that is where I served. I grew to know the students personally as friends. One day I happened upon some senior classmen teasing one of the special needs students that I served. His name was Randy. Randy was profoundly handicapped, only mobile through the use of an electric scooter and nonverbal. Needless to say, I could have handled the situation a little differently than I did. Now, my dad was a highway patrolman, and fighting in school is unacceptable. Rather than expel me, the principal, who, who was a great savior, actually, told my father he had an alternative. 
There was a new program in the school, Junior Reserve Officer Training Corps. I'd never heard of it. And I agreed to join enthusiastically with my dad's support, I may add. And I would not be suspended from school if I joined the program that was required, that as required by school district rules. With the full support of my dad, that, that's one way to put it, I joined junior ROTC. There I met Sergeant First Class David Fisher, a retired Army tanker that proudly served with Patton's Third Army in World War II. Sergeant First Class Fisher took the time to cultivate my self-discipline. His guidance and encouragement have proven invaluable, and I am grateful for everything that he taught me. In keeping with his teachings, I enlisted in the Army at 17, June of 85. with the intent to serve our nation, and in my own way, pay for the incredible freedoms our country affords. But I fell in love with the Army, the people, the mission, the organization. And 39 years later, I stand before you truly blessed at the opportunity to continue serving our country and state. I have much to be thankful for. On a running track in Texas, I first saw whew, I first saw the beautiful young woman who had become my wife. Yeah, I do. I tried to give it to him earlier. He said, I don't need it. Now, she did not notice me as she lapped me twice in a two-mile run. <laughs> yeah. But I, I'm glad we actually have people here today so I can get my side of the story out. There were some slow people blocking me from running, and I couldn't get up to full speed. <laughs> All right. I just wanted to make sure. But I noticed her. 35 years and three incredible kids later, Emily, Justin, and Jacob. As I address everyone today, please know that I am proud so very proud to follow in the footsteps of extraordinary leaders who have led our country and state through competition and deterrence, through conflicts around the world, and dom domestic emergencies here at home. As an organization, an extended family, together guided by our non-negotiables, safety, unity, integrity, we will take care of our people, drive readiness, foster a culture of excellence, and strengthen our profession through our individual and collective courage, competence, commitment, candor, and compassion, the five C's. As a special message to our non-commissioned officers, as a former NCO myself, no one is more professional than you. Competence is your watchword. Officers will have maximum time to accomplish their duties. You are the backbone of the Nevada National Guard. I expect you to hold allegiance to our country and the state of Nevada. Devotion to duty and personal integrity above all. You must promote the highest standards of conduct, appearance, and performance by setting the example. To the men and women of the Nevada National Guard and their families, and the Division of Emergency Management, state admin team, and youth programs, I am excited to continue serving with you. Building on Major General Barry's 38 years of dedicated service, I am committed to addressing today's challenges while preparing for the future, forging a force of character and courage. No doubt there are challenges ahead. There will be difficult but not impossible if we work together. I look forward to working with the components and the joint staff to address the challenges we face today and those we will face. We must stay focused, accelerate our ongoing efforts, and make the tough choices we often discuss. We must develop and empower leaders and provide superior experiences and quality of life for our service members and their families so they can reach their full potential. Working together, I am confident that the Nevada National Guard will continue to set the example for excellence across the nation. Organizational excellence requires cooperation and collaboration. Here today, 
I reaffirm my commitment to the Army and Air Force values and rededicate all my abilities. To the I am extremely grateful, honored, blessed, and proud of this tremendous privilege. Thank you for joining us today for today's ceremony. God bless you and God bless the United States of America.